Shelbyville A High School in Pike County, where the finals of the boys' 15th regional tournament is about to be played in about 15 minutes. What excitement already. Both sides are up to each other, and I don't think anybody's left in Floyd County up right on El Fever Creek of this tournament. But I have with me Ashley Casey, a special guest. He's the signing secretary in the 15th region of the Kentucky High School Athletic Association. He's the head man of the officials. Ashley, it's good to be talking with you again. Pete, it's great. This time of the year is just fabulous for 15th region basketball. And I just, you know, just looking around this facility gets you excited. And you can really build electricity in this place already. And we're 15 minutes before game time. And everybody in will ride in the high hat. And Rod Beaver, too, has to be in this facility. Well, certainly it's a great tournament atmosphere. It's the first time that Floyd County's had two teams in the finals since 1989 when Prestonburg uh, beat McDowell Daredevil. Johnny Ray Turner was coach there, and Henry Webb was his star guard. So you can see how hungry right and left Beaver Creek, how hungry they are to have a win and go to state tournament. You know, it, Pete, it's great to have four strong districts in this region, but when you come down to it the, this year and uh, the basketball here, we got uh, Allen Central and South Florida competing in the championship game of the region, and what an honor for a district to be represented that way because there was a lot of good teams there, but, the, you know, in these tournaments, sometimes the cream rises to the top, and we got two great teams here to end this uh, that any of those four teams in the regional semifinals could have won this tournament. And I still say that the closest of the games really uh, tell us and bear out the truth of those teams. Pete, I thought last night's basketball semifinal contest were truly two of the greatest games that's played in a while in this region. I've never seen kids that give it their all like they did last night. And you know, the two losers, they played great basketball and they left it all out here on the court too. And we want to compliment Shelby Valley's administrators, teachers, coaches, athletic directors. Great job they've done with this new format. And what do you think about the new format, the 15th region, where you play the boys and girls in the same location? Pete, you know, this is a big change in the regional format, no doubt about it. But most people here this week seems, seems to be pretty positive about the situation. You know, girls and boys playing together. And it really, it, it, we share the small line. And, and I think it combines with Title IX, and I think those are parts that needed to happen in this region, and I like for the 15th region to be the example across this state and leading the charge, and we, we want to be out front. And I think the state might adopt this policy and go statewide with it. Oh, it's a great policy. Nancy, tell us what your job is. I know that you assign all the officials in the 15th. Give our fans out there in radio and TV land an idea of what the magnitude of your job is. Well, it's a it's a big job, Pete. Uh, you know, I, I receive schedules from every coach in this region to the tune of about probably five to six hundred games. And you, when you, if you got 600 games, you're talking at least 1,200 people. So it's a it's a big task, and we cover the whole region. We're fortunate to have good numbers in this region, and if we can cover our games good. This year, my guys is working down in the 12th region at Pulaski County and over at Russell County for the girls. So my people's down there. I'm, I'm watching these people here work, and I'll give the signing secretary from the 12th region a report next week, and he'll send me one. Hopefully, you know, these games are hard to arbitrate. We all know that. But we're, we're fortunate to have good, competent people to work these games, and they're tough to work. Yes, they certainly are. Uh, well, you and the other signing secretaries, will you determine your ratings? Who will call the boys state tournament next week at Rupp Arena and the girls later at Weston? Pete, I'm, I'm very glad that you asked that question <laughs> because not only have we got a Floyd County final here tonight, we've got a great official from Floyd County that will be representing the 15th region next week in the state Sweet 16, Mr. Dale Kahn. And I, and I think he's truly one of the best officials in the Commonwealth. Well, it's good to know that. Congratulations to Dale. So what else can you tell us about your job and 
about the state tournament coming up, the boys and girls in Lexington and Bowling Green, as far as officials are concerned? Well, we do observe officials at all tournament contests, and we work with the commissioner's office. They will they will want input on different situations and where our people are going or what you know what's going to occur. And then the, our coaches is the final ranking to the officials, and they're at the mercy of the coaches on their rating. So we're fortunate to have a lot of quality coaches in this region, and they do rate our people. The number one goes to the state tournament, and this year Mr. Khan has been selected, and you know. I, I just feel great for Dale Kahn because I, I, I think he's one of the great officials, like I said earlier, but I also love his dad, too. Is the three-member format for officials, is it doing a good job as far as the KHSA is concerned? The, repeat that question. I the three-team the three team officials, how's that concept working? You know, last year was the first year that the state mandated that all postseason had to be three-man crews. In the last year, Pete, I thought it went over relatively well, uh, particularly in our state tournament. And we want we want the best out here for children. You know, it's it's got to be what's best on the floor for children. But you got ten children out here, and the officials, I think, will, wants to do the greatest job that they can and give it their all and lay it on the line and let them ten children decide all contests. All right, there you have some information you heard from Nancy Casey, our signing secretary in the 15th region. Nancy, you do a great job year in, year out. Behind the scenes, people don't know exactly what your job's about, but I know it works you hard, and we appreciate the work that you do, buddy. Thank you, Pete. Appreciate you. Nancy Casey, our signing secretary in the 15th region, and we have up in the booth with us now, we're honored to have P.D. Gearhart. We got P.D. with us, Ken and Adam, so I don't know what's going to happen tonight. It took the Floyd County teams, I think, to bring him out of hibernation, but PD's with us. So take it away up there, Ken, in the booth. All right. Thank you there, Pete. And we're just a few minutes away from the start of this championship game of the 15th Regional Tournament. And what a matchup we've got. The South Floyd Raiders taking on the Allen Central Run Reds. And uh, Adam, this should be a classic. Oh, indeed, an all-58 district matchup, as you said, a rematch from last Friday night as South Floyd Raiders come out of running and a gunning, and God, Allen Central down quickly and never looked back in that 58th district championship game. So South Floyd Raiders, the champions in the 58th district, Allen Central is the runners-up. But throughout the season, uh, they met a couple other times, and Allen Central come out on the better end of their, those two matchups. And as Johnny Martin said, they obviously forgot about the two beatings we gave them during the season and won the district. Now we got to forget about the district and concentrate on this because this is where the big show, the Sweet 16, you get to go down the road to Rupp Arena and play in that tournament that's one of a kind in the United States. That's right, and uh, it's going to be a great battle. So we're glad you joined us here on the Intermountain Sports Network. We're going to kick it back to the station now for a break, and we'll be back in just a few minutes here for Kelly Valley High School as this 15th regional tournament action. Allen Central versus South Floyd on the Intermountain Sports Network. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution, encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. <laughs> oh, you're not gonna believe this. What's going on? The neighbors got hacked again. Weird, we never get hacked. Nope, no we don't. Finals, 15th Region Boys Tournament. Excitement's already in the air. I'm telling you, it's really tournament atmosphere. Adam, you know it's a great atmosphere. You've been around long enough, played yourself, and I, we got a coach sitting here between us. Knows a lot about tournament atmosphere. Coach Johnny Ray Turner now sends us there, and Floyd, and uh, Preppet, and Dodd, and Johnson County. So, Coach, it's good to have you back up here with us in the booth. Thank you, Coach. I'll tell you what, it is a great atmosphere here tonight. No doubt about that. This is, this is, it's, it's electric in the air. Johnny Ray Turner's not only a coach, he's the defending champion coach here at the 15th region. A lot of memories that, here tonight. A lot of people asked me if I miss it. Tonight I miss it. This is, this is what it's all about right here. 
is what you work so hard for many, many years. People do not realize the work and the time and effort that goes into the coach and to the team players. And uh, there's been a lot of hours developing, and this is what you work for to get this opportunity to go to state. Exactly right. You know, you start October 15th officially, but you start conditioning and weightlifting and things like that as soon as school starts. You work all summer taking them to camp, so it's a year-round job. And, and to, to, to do what, uh, to get to this point, it's just a great thrill. It doesn't, it doesn't any better. Well, we're about ready to get the starting lineups announced, Adam, so uh, I'm going to kick it over to you, partner, when you're ready. But I'm going to be doing the play-by-play, -play and Adam, the uh, stats and the color, and Ken down there on the stats. And we, we got a quadruple going, and Johnny Ray's going to help us with some color and some comments. Okay, let's go ahead, and, and uh, we got 120 on the clock for tonight's uh, opening ceremonies and starting lineups and tip-off of tonight's championship game for the boys, 15th region at the Shelby Valley Sports Center. Let's talk about last night's action. Golly, what a Friday night of basketball. As in the first game, it was the Paintsville Tigers falling to Allen Central Running Rebels by one, 62 one in a thriller and then in the nightcap what well, was more of a thriller pretty much both of them equal for it but a last second shot south floyd's newman makes it and south floyd wins by two over pipefield and it's allen central south floyd all 58th district matchup here coach turner well adam you know uh, it's a shame that either team had to lose those games last night because all, all four teams fought hard all the way down to the wire and that's what it took it ate the, the one that uh, one point a game and uh, one of them a two point game and the other and I'm telling you it was just unreal last night. And South Floyd moves over to the 20 win mark for the season, Coach Henry Webb. So outstanding season for Henry Webb and of course uh, Coach uh, Johnny Martin's already been over that 20 mark for a while this season as uh, he improved his record to 27 and 5 with that victory last night. Uh, I was talking to Coach Webb and uh, he said I think this is two years in a row his team has hit uh, the 20 win mark so that's uh, a great accomplishment uh, for the young school. Okay, we're about ready to take it court side. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Shelby Valley High School and Community Trust Bank, welcome to the Shelby Valley Sports Center for the championship of the 2001 Boys 15th Region Basketball Tournament. At this time, we ask that you please stand and direct your attention to center court, where the Shelby Valley Color Guard will present the colors. Commander, Major Sean Barber. First Lieutenant, Michael Yablonski. Staff Sergeant, Rebecca Anderson. Captain, Christopher Elder. Tech Sergeant, Sarah Thacker. And Staff Sergeant, Britta Tackett. And please remain standing as the national anthem will be played by the Allen Central High School Band.
for the visitors on the scoreboard, the Raiders of South Floyd. And a guard, a 6'1 senior, number 23, John Mead. The other guard, a 5'11 sophomore, number 10, Mike Hall. At center, a 6'4 sophomore, number 41, Charles Ray. forward at 6-1 junior number 20 Rusty Tackett the other forward at 6 foot senior number 34 Josh Newman the Raiders have a record of 20 and 10 they're coached by Henry Webb Jeff Castle Zena Paul Keith Smallwood Tony Isaac and Ricky Ward and now for the home team the Allen Central running Rebels Senior number 14, Larry Mullins. The other guard, a 5'9 junior, number 23, Sean Newsom. At center, a 6'4 senior, number 40, Rodney Scott. And one forward, a 6'4 senior, number 35, Jeremy Hayes. The other forward, a 6'5 senior, number 15, Travis Francis. The Rebels have a record of 27 and 5. They're coached by John Martin, Kevin Spurlock, Robert Mason, and Jerry Mann. All right, we're about ready for championship night. The boys, 15th Regional Tournament, South Floyd, Allen Central, will be Pete Creechby on your play-by-play. -play. They got Coach Johnny Ray Turner of Johnson Central Eagles last year's 15th Regional Champion in the booth with us to make some comments throughout the game. Glad to have you with us, both of you. Thanks a lot, Adam. It's great to be here. And also Ken Hall and Charlie Pinson, the whole Intermount Sports Network crew, Sean on the camera over there, doing an excellent job. And, and we want to invite everyone to stay tuned with us here on this Saturday night as we're ready for action. Pete Grigsby Jr., take it away, pal. Thank you, Adam. Good to see PD back with us, even though he is sort of a spectator, but it's good to get him out of the house. As we're already set now for the tip-off, and here's the toss-up, and it goes to Rusty Packett in front. Of it up, guard it by Scott. In the left corner, drives the baseline, cut off to Francis. Out front, it goes to Meade. Meade gives it on the right side for three. Is Hall. No good. Rebound. Ray comes away with it. And is picked up outside for Meade. He tries a long three. It's good. That's right. Three to nothing. Francis throws it across the way. Goes to Bowen. Bowen drives in the middle. Up and misses the way out. Rebound at the South Floyd. Speed. He has it. Front court. Top of the key. Matchup zone for the Reds. They like to play that. Meade started off with a long three. Noble in the right corner. Comes back outside. Resets it. Top of the key. And left side it goes to Meade. He drives wild. One hand and no good. Our ball. There's Hayes on the board. Gives it to Mullen. Mullins has been guarded out front by Michael Hall. He drops back a little bit. Now Mullen setting the offense. Right now it looks like a zone one, two, two for South Floyd. He's at the point. Hayes open for three, and he's got it from the left wing. About a 22 footer. Tied up, three off. I have a feeling this is what we're going to see a lot of tonight, guys. Both nope. teams playing a little bit of a zone, looks like, and uh, you're likely to see a lot of three. Out front is Hall driving the middle, cut off. Newman on the left side for three, our ball. Hayes is all over the board with the rebound. Of course, Newman hit the big shot last night to put Popwell. Inside to Scott, over to Hayes. In the corner to Francis for two, he's got it. Five to three on the baseline, 15 foot and under the net. Trying to answer South Floyd in front court. All over to me, to Newman in the right corner. Zone defense for both teams. Coach Webb wants Hall to run number one. He holds it up. Top of the key. That's number one put in the hoop. He misses. Oh, that's a long rebound. 
And he moves it across the men's try. Five to three early in the contest. 15th reach of action. Winner of this game will go to Rupp Arena next Wednesday afternoon. Hayes for three, left side no good. Scott on the board and the put back up and he missed it. We've got a scramble underneath, I think it's old in the back call. And that'll be Travis Francis on the foul. His first, team's first. South Floyd is pressing, uh, well, they haven't pressed yet. No one's had the opportunity. There's Hall driving, gives it up to me, and uh, he almost lost it. Gets back on the left side for three, no good, he missed it. And there's Hayes on the board. But we've got a foul as Hayes went high for that one. Now he must have gone over top of Newman. What about that, Josh Doc? Newman had really good position on the inside. And ball bounced along with Hayes going over the back. He went aggressive to the, to the ball, though. Back it. Inbound underneath going back to the meat. He loses. Stolen by Mullen. Turn over to South Floyd. Mullen's in backcourt now. As South Floyd sets up half court, one, two, two, zone. Left side it goes. On the baseline is Francis for two. He misses. Uh, Scott on the rebound to put back up, and it misses. And the ball is knocked out of bounds, and it goes back down and simple. Boy, Scott has missed two easy ones underneath there. Up 10, 12 footers. Allen Central inbounds the ball. Hayes looking way out deep in backcourt as well as he runs it down. It's not over the back on that. They're allowed to do it. Mullins loses, crossing the stop, in a corner, Newsom for three. Right corner, and it's good. Nothing but net. Eight for three. Four, 42 to play. These teams have been crossed three times during the year, and with that, they take a timeout. We'll take a timeout and run it back to the station. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. With families spending more time at home together this year, it's a great time to level up your internet for the speed and Wi-Fi you need to power game consoles and computers at peak performance. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to upgrade. A satellite signal comes from outer space. The satellite office across the country and their call center? Hmm, we'd better not even go there. So if you want to do business in your hometown with people you know and trust, call cable. Gearheart Broadband is locally owned and operated. Our number one concern is giving you, your neighbors, and your community friendly local customer support. Get everything you want. Go local. Go Gearheart Broadband. Michael Hall across the timeline over to Rusty Tackett. In the corner to Newman. He rolled last night's game. They're starting again tonight to see him. Josh Newman in the left side of Coach Tackett. They move it around top of the key. Back to Michael Hall. In the corner for three is Meade, and he's got an arrow ball. Newsom on the board, moving it down court on the run out. All the way up and under. He puts it up and in. He's got a call. It looks like it's an offensive charge foul. No basket. And Sean Newsom just picked up his first foul. Team's third. One side of the gym liked that, Coach Turner. The other side did. One through and one yelling. Ah, what action tonight. What atmosphere. Michael Hall resets the offense. Gets the rush to tack the left side. Pull up J15 ah. is good. Full court pressure. They moving out fast. Newsom, 18-footer all the way. In and out. No good. That's moving on the board. Gives it out to tackle. On the move in front court is Tackett to Newman. Hockey Hall for three now, and he misses. Staying high for the board. It's Rusty Tackett, and he puts it back in. He really got for that one. That was a great rebound. Mullins having trouble in back court, throws it down to Newsom. Newsom drives, cut off. Eight to seven now with 3.30 to play in the first quarter. AC on top. Mullins sets the offense against that one 2, two zone. Hayes, left side, back to Mullins, top of the key, back to Hayes. Hayes lets the five for 22, it's no good. And there's Meade on the high rebound. He just ran in there and took it out of everybody's hands and moves it across the mid stripe. Over to Mikey Hall, the right wing, drives the middle. And he travels, going through the lane. He was sort of tripped up, but it was the right call, Johnny. 
Francis, the 309 to play. His team ahead by one. Takes it out of bounds. It's Newsom. Newsom over to Francis. To Mullins. Mullins has it. He's fouled. Coach that press uh, that, that South Floyd had last weekend against uh, Alex Mitchell is not as effective. I'm sure Coach Martin went in and worked on a strategy against that. Yeah, he's working a new format, isn't he, against that press. And so yeah. far it's worked. They went down the sideline last Friday night, threw the ball away several times, but working it to the middle now. Hayes unloads a three from the left wing. It's there. 11 to 7. Both teams playing his own defense. 2.40 to play in the first. First quarter, Tyler Hall in the game, misses a three, rebound fought for, goes to the floor, four guys on it, five on it, referees finally blow the whistle. First and 10, first and 10, absolutely. And on the arrow possession, it goes over to South Floor. 11 to seven, for two and a half minutes to play. Yes, Johnny. It's with Allen Simmons. Time to court to Scott. Scott. Moves in and misses. There's a whistle. Yeah, that'll be a blocking foul on Tyler Hall, his first team second. Scott will go to the free throw line for two. What tournament atmosphere. It is a full house and, <laughs> man, doing good to hear ourselves up here, guys. Adam, there's nobody on left or right here tonight. Three tonight. Oh, no, I guarantee it. First one is short. No good. Scott hasn't found the range yet. He's missed a couple easy putbacks. Now he's found Scott. Second one is good. He found the range on that one. 12 to 7 in front court is packed in the corner for three. No good. On the putback, it's no good. Two. South Floyd with the big rebound. Charles Ray put it up and missed it, but it goes out of bounds to South Floyd. Allen Central really going to the boards hard tonight. There was two guys after that ball, and that's the reason they lost it out of bounds. Tackett kicks it out to me. Back to Tackett in the corner. As AC sets up that matching zone defense, Tyler Hall, left wing. He's in the game now off the bench for Coach Henry Webb's Raiders. Hall gives it to Tyler Hall. He drives the baseline, puts it up. Got a shot blocked. <laughs> Pick up the Ray up and in. What a nice save by Charles Ray. Alert play. He was going hard to the basket. The ball just fell in his hand. That's what you call breaks. That's right. <laughs> you got to have them, Coach. Well, you got to be going to the going to that rebound. You know the ball's going up. You got to be going after it. Charles Ray almost completes the three-point, but it rolls off Scott. Has it. 12 to 9, two minutes to play in the first quarter. AC on top. Hayes gives it back out front. Newsom in the corner. And he is tied and arrow possession goes over to South Floyd. Two men double teamed. I don't think he was expecting that press. No, he wasn't. I, he, they trapped out of that 3-2 zone down in the corner here, and uh, Newsom had nowhere to go. Hall, top of the key. South Floyd on the attack. Drives. Gets the fifth ball. The great look underneath the rusty tackle. He broke the defense down that, that way. And we got a foul on back for the blocking foul. I tell you, I said it last night, and I'll say it again tonight. Michael Hall, the best playmaker in the 15th region, as far as I'm concerned. He makes the right passes at the right time and gets his guys open for the easy baskets. He, he certainly got, does a good job. He's got that uncanny ball handling. He can take the ball to the basket and create something on that. Mullins across the men's side. His team lead the one. A minute 25 to play in the first quarter. 12 to the score. Mullins in the post. It goes to Newsom. He spins, puts it up. And he is fouled. Great movement, agility, hang time. And they put Newsom in the post that time. And Mullins gave him the ball. And it was effective. I remember back in the uh, early, back in the 70s, I guess, was when Pat Talent played and uh, Randy Click. They put Randy Click in the high post in the coach. They sure did. It was effective. Back, back the same side fell. And Newsom buries the first one. Randy Flick who played at Maytown back in uh, those days. Right. Ready for the second one. 13 to 11. Make that 14 to 11. A minute 20 to play. AC on top. 
In the corner, down the court, loads Rusty Packett, and uh, he has to oh. be called for traveling because he probably did the first one walk, and he, he got away with the first yeah. one, but they got the second. Yeah. It's a little delayed on that one, but he made the right call. Back court, they're pressing. AC works at Newsom, he moves it across, double team, gives it to Mullen. And we got another traveling call on this one. Move the microphone just a little bit closer now, folks. A minute seven to play, 14 to 11. Mikey Hall in front court, top of the key. Tries to throw it inside, Larry Mullen's kicking back court. Well, Larry started to uh, cheerlead a little bit at him again tonight. Well, that he is. Every team needs that. <laughs> a player cheerleader that can get the crowd up. And I have to admit, I was one of those players when he, I played for Betsy Lane, and I love to do it. He's not He's not just trying to get his crowd up. He's trying to get both crowds up. <laughs> Mikey Hall out front, top of the tee, guarded by Mullins there in the matchup zone. Over to me, John needs with 50 seconds to go. It don't take much to get these two uh, <laughs> crowds fired up, does it, Pete? Packet moves out front, just dribbling the ball around. Trying to pull AC out from that zone, but they're going to run the clock, take the last shot. They're down to three. Coach Webb is giving instruction from the pitch. He holds up both hands, five, that means double five or ten. Ten or thumbs up, or whatever that is. Last night, it meant Mikey Hall took the last shot. And Mikey's got the ball now, gives old to tag it. 18 seconds to play. Ball is just taunting them. He goes out and taunts Tack a little bit. So come on, big boy, let's play. And there's Packett, left wing for three. Too <coughs> strong, no good. Tyler Hall's on the board, and we got a whistle. What was back over the back, over the back on the rebound. That was a nice call play there for the last second shot. 5.9 seconds to play. AC throws it into Hayes. is knocked out of bounds by Tyler Hall. Back to AC. Coach, I don't know what that call. I thought it was over the back, but Alan Simpson threw the ball inbound. So. Yeah, it's over, over the backboard, I believe. Mullins driving all the way up oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. What a finger roll by Larry. Oh. Mullins to Alan Central, giving his team a 16-11 lead at the end of the first quarter. Boy, it's going to be a dandy. Don't go away, but we'll take you to the station and be right back. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. When you add up all the Wi-Fi connected devices in your home these days, you'll be surprised how many there are and how much bandwidth they're using. Do the math. It just may add up to needing faster internet and Wi-Fi. Good thing Gearheart Broadband has reliable download speeds up to one gig and Plume Adaptive Home Wi-Fi to keep all your devices well connected. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or visit Gearheart Broadband online for a great offer. Now's your chance for a great deal on smoke and fast internet from Gearheart Broadband. Upgrade to the smoldering speed you need, up to one gig, and add Plume Adaptive Wi-Fi to reach every corner of your home. Experience no lag gaming, your favorite music, web surfing, HD video streaming, and connect to the latest smart devices. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or click Gearheart Broadband for a great offer today. It's 16-11, Allen Central. Take it away, Pete. Thank you, Ken. Long three from the left wing is Jeremy Hayes. He just knocked the bottom out of that 19-11. He's South Floyd in front court. Yes, John. He can sure shoot that three if they don't if they don't get a hand up. Mikey Hall drives in, finds the seam all the way up and on it rolls Hall. Got his own rebound, puts it up. He misses and there's Scott. The little fella falls his shot and got the rebound in the land of the giant. Follow. Hayes in the corner for three. It's there. He is red hot. He's on fire. He's holding a two-dollar pistol. And with that, score 22 to 11. AC has got a big run going. We'll take it back to the station. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. More than ever, we're all living online right now. It's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments, all without leaving your home. Make life a little easier. 
online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. No good. On the board is Francis. Francis he did a good job last night in the second half. He and Scott doing real good and on the defensive glass right now. Mullins guarded by Mikey Hall, drives the lane, cut off, gives it to Francis. He follows it, picks it back up to Scott. Top of the key, no question about that, Brown. He picked up both feet. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of the South Fork fans who want one over in the corner, but now this one's definitely the wrong. Mike Hall down the corner, Tyler Hall. Inside it goes to Newman, puts it up. Off the glass for two. I don't know how he got that shot off, but he got it. For, for a 5'10", uh, 5'11", five, five, kid, that was a nice move. It certainly was. Newsom on the baseline for two. He misses. And Newman rebounds it to South Floyd. 22 to 13. Six and a half minutes play in the first half. Second quarter action. 15th regional final. That Shelby Valley High School has tackled. Spins into the lane. Has a shot blocked. Picked up by me. His shot was blocked from behind. And the ball is bounced around underneath like a volleyball, and it goes out of bounds. The referee's on the knees, and he says, well, it's back to South Florida. <laughs> you know that ball. They blocked that ball, and it almost went to the basket. I know. It bounced up there. It wouldn't have surprised me if it had gone in. And backcourt, as Tackett throws it back to me, in front court now. Tyler Hall for three in the right corner, but it nails it. Beautiful arching shot, nothing but that. Mullins in front court as they break for pressure. Double team, triple team. Look here at this intensity down there. The refs, the coaches, everybody flying in the stands. They knock the referee into Henry Webb's lap and he called a foul, but who did he call it on? He might have called it on Henry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, folks. But it was a scramble near the bench and he sat in Coach Webb's lap, but it was a foul on number 10, Mikey Hall. <laughs> Had to put a little fun in the game. <laughs> in the right corner goes to Newsom. Newsom uh, out front to Mullins. We got a push off foul. Who's that on, Ken? And that was John Mead. John Mead. Both John Mead and Michael Hall with two fouls now. Boy, if you folks ever feel like wanting to do something to referees, watch this tonight. You'll get a kick out of that. <laughs> he almost landed up in the second row of the stands, but he didn't land on the bench. AC underneath their own basket. Inbounds to Scott. Puts it up and in on outbound play. Inside screen there, Coach Turner. Got him open. Yeah, that's a nice out of bounds play underneath. South Floyd on the attack. Mike Hall, 25 foot straight away. He's not connected. There's Rusty Tackett on rebound. Puts it up and in. Tell you, Rusty rebound. Tackett is a sky tonight, and he's pulled down some huge rebounds. Newsom brings it across, gives it out front to Mullins. Mullins to Newsom. Newsom lets it fly in the right corner for three, too strong, and there's need on the board. Nobody went to the glass for AC that time. 24-18, five and a half minutes playing the second quarter. Mikey Hall drives. Cut off, loses away. He threw it to Newman. Newman wasn't ready, and Newsom picked it up. Turnover to AC. 24-18. Six-point lead. Uh, South Floyd's made a little run here. Move on offense. Newsom. Right corner back to Mullins. Mullins fakes, drives in the lane. He's called for traveling. They're not going to give you that little head and, head and shoulder fake tonight, are they? No, they're not. They've been pretty tight on that call this whole tournament, boys and girls. South Floyd on the offensive now with ball control out front to Tyler Hall, right penny. Wing into me, the high post. Kicks it back out to Newman. Newman tries to throw it inside. Deflected out of bounds. Good defense by. Oh, he got a foul. Yeah, it's reaching over the, over the back there. Uh, Coach Travis Francis picked up his second foul. Rust attack inbounds underneath his own basket. Looking, looking, and it's knocked out of bounds for Francis, who's guarding an inbounds pass. And Allen comes in for uh, Francis, who takes the seat. On the sideline, we inbounds it. He gets it into Newman. Newman's well guarded. Out front it goes to Hall. Out front to Meade. To Hall on the left wing. Inside it goes to Rusty Tackett playing the post. Spin move underneath the Meade. He misses. Rebound by Allen. They play that high-low post uh, strategy. It all works. He just got himself too far into the basket. Mullins now is in front court. Right corner goes to Newsom. Back out the point it goes. 
Mullins inside the post, in the lane to Scott, turn around, jumper, in and out. Scott goes for it, tap out to Hall on a run out. But defense is back, AC got to get, got their defense back. Need loses in the post, and we got a whistle. AC crab one to welcome violation. Uh, quite possibly could have been, but uh, South Floyd got the foul. Rodney Scott picked up his second, team six. Packett wind bounds the ball underneath his own basket. Out deep he goes to me near the mid stride. 24-18, we've been stuck at that for a minute. Tyler Hall on the left wing, back out to Hall. Hall high post to me, drives to the lane with the right hand. Boy, did he fake everybody in here. He put it up his right hand off the glass for two. Scott, come on, to Newsom. Two on two break. Newsom drives in, short jumper. In and out, no good. South Floyd with the rebound, out to Hall. Hall moving, faking, driving. Goes into the lane. Oh, put up a bad shot that time, and Scott rebounded. I believe there was the NBA move at the end of that. <laughs> he wanted that extra, extra step, didn't he? <laughs> He goes to the basket. I love guards that love to go to the basket. I, 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 that's what I was going to say, Coach. That's the difference in the, the game right now, the difference in the score. Allen Central's taking the ball to the hoop. Now in Central with the ball in a four-point lead, 24-20, 3-10 on the clock. And we've got a three-second call on Allen Central as they tried to work the ball around. This one referee over here on our side, he calls walking or three seconds. They must have one that calls uh, fouls, too. <laughs> Hall out front, over to Tackett, 24 to 20. Tyler Hall for three, he misses this one. Underneath his knees, moving on the board. Good fake. And a put back by Newman is there, 24 22. That shot that Newman hit last night must have given him a lot of confidence. Ball almost thrown away, picked up by Hayes, he drives in, puts it up. Great for Allen Central. 26-22, two and a half minutes to play in the first half. Hall, moves it across, dribbles around, gives the tacket. Far side to Newman, left side, out front is tacket, right wing goes to Hall, he drives. Tyler Hall in the corner for three, it's good. Way downtown. Is he hot or is he hot? Coach, uh, Coach Webb's made an adjustment uh, in this quarter also. He put John Mead into the high post. Drawing the defense in a little bit more. Allen Central with Allen and uh, taking the ball inbound to the backcourt. Over to Scott. Scott throws it across court to Newsom. Newsom over to Hayes. Hayes for three. It's off. Rebound by Scott. It's the air ball. He put us up and in. 28 25. Two minutes to play. Three-point lead for the Rebels. In the corner it goes to Tyler Hall. Well guarded. He got out on him this time. Mikey Hall for three from left wing. Hits in and out. No good. Allen with the rebound. Michael Hall, you have to score tonight. Mullins across the mid side. 140 to play. He sets the offense. Stack offense. Drives the middle. Gives it to Hayes. Three-pointer on the way short. No good. Michael Hall runs it down to tack it. Tackett drives in, and we've got a foul with some contact on Jeremy Hayes on the blocking foul. That's his second 17 foul. So Rusty Tackett will be at the line for the one plus one. 129 to play in the first half. Tackett, two important foul shots if he can make it. Missy, rebound Hayes. To Mullen. He will almost walk it across, setting up his offense. 1 4 offense, stack offense. Mullins moves across to Newsom. Newsom trying to drive, working lane of foul line. Oh, the start as they weave out front. Scott still leaves. Mullins in the corner. Saves it, moves back out front on the dribble. Dribble penetration gives it up to Hayes for three. He misses again. Boy, he's grown cold. Look here, what a pass. Unbelievable pass. Big pass down court. Wasn't just, just a good pass. It wasn't just a good pass. He had a good hand to catch that pass. Certainly was. Ball. To Newsom. Inside to Allen. Allen won't shoot. Puts it up. And 
we got a traveling call. That's a case of the extra pass. He should have took it on up. He had a lay-in. Right. You know, we've seen quite a few of those extra passes. They should be a shot instead of passing. Pikeville broke into the lane quite a few times last night and didn't see it. That's right, but it's hard to tell, kid, not to be unsettled. And we got a one-point ball game here in the boys' 15th regional tournament. South Floyd's going to hold it for the last shot of the half. Down by one, 28-27 to Allen Central. Me, John Me just holding out near midcourt. His team has made a comeback, 11 points down at the break, at the first quarter, and he's holding it back. Down over to Tyler Hall, nine seconds to Newman. Newman's in the corner, throws it to Rusty Tackett. Tackett puts it up, no good. Tap goes up, Allen gets it, and at the buzzer, We've got the end of the first half of the boys' 15th region tournament here at Chevy Valley High School with the score. Allen Central 28, South Floyd 27. Don't go away, folks. we got a good one going. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. Smart devices make our lives better, but they're also susceptible to hackers. That's why Plume helps identify when a device is acting strange. You mean like talking to itself for no reason? I'm talking to the audience. A satellite signal comes from outer space. The satellite office across the country and their call center? Hmm, we'd better not even go there. So if you wanna do business in your hometown with people you know and trust, call cable. Gearheart Broadband is locally owned and operated. Our number one concern is giving you, your neighbors and your community friendly local customer support. Get everything you want. Go local, go Gearheart Broadband. Okay, welcome back to the Shelby Valley Sports Center, the boys' 15th regional tournament championship game on this Saturday night. Glad to have you along with us. We're at halftime, and right now we're going to take it to Ken Hall, who's got some halftime stats. Okay, first of all, the individual scoring for the South Floyd Raiders. They were led by Rusty Tackett with 10. Six points for Tyler Hall on a pair of three-pointers in the second quarter. Five for John Meade. Four for Josh Newman. Two for Charles Ray. Michael Hall did not score in the first half. For Allen Central, they were led by Jeremy Hayes with 14 points as Hayes hit four three-pointers, two in each quarter, but he's missed his last three uh, attempts from three-point range. Uh, five points for Sean Newsom, five for Rodney Scott, two for Larry Mullins, and two for Travis Francis. The rebounding total South Floyd, 22 rebounds. Allen Central with 17. As uh, South Floyd have, had 12 offensive rebounds, 10 defensive. Uh, Allen Central with four offensive boards and 13 defensive boards. The turnover situation, South Floyd committed only four in the first half. Allen Central with seven turnovers. Uh, Allen Central shooting uh, 10 of 24 from the field for 41 percent and South Floyd 12 of 38 for 31 percent. From the line, the uh, Raiders of South Floyd 0 for 2 from the line and Allen Central hit 3 out of 4. There's no one in, on either team with uh, more than two fouls as Allen Central has Jeremy Hayes, Travis Francis, and Rodney Scott with two fouls each. For South Floyd, both John Meade and Michael Hall have two. Okay, we got about a minute before we get into the second half of the championship game, and it's going to be a thriller. Keep it right here on the Intermountain Sports Network quickly. I want to run down our sponsors on the radio. WXLR, WXKZ, Vanover, Hall, and Bartley, Carpet Mine, Pepsi, Glenn Martin Hammond, Attorney at Law, Dr. Lee Machaki, Video Magic 2000, Dr. Regina Coleman, Shelby Valley Daycare. Also on tonight's game, McDowell Professional pharmacy, Dr. Richard Salisbury and J.W. Conson Funeral Home. On the TV, WPRG TV5, R.N.S. Jones Funeral Home, Van Overhaul and Bartley, Microtech Internet Services, Pikeville Methodist Hospital, Appalachian Wireless, Pepsi, Keens Homes, Hammond Law Office, also Nelson Frazier Funeral Home, Justice and Stamper Insurance, Hall Funeral Home, Total Pharmacy Care, Downtown Drug, and Linda's Daycare. WPRG TV5, we want to thank all those fine people. And we're about ready. Tinker and Virginia, Johnny Ray Turner for more action. And 
We're getting set. The crowd's ready. Both sides standing up, bands blurring. Hey, uh, another interesting stat in the first half. Uh, Allen Central, 5 of 11 from, from the three-point line. South Floyd, only 3 of 17. And, and uh, when you shoot that poorly and you're only one point down, you got to feel pretty good about your team if they start sinking some of those shots. Ken, what I noticed uh, about these stats that I thought was interesting, South Floyd shot 14 more shots than Allen Central. Well, it's, uh, as you well know, it's, the team put it in that hole, put it in that basket, scores the most points. That's that's the object of the old game. I always like players that put it in the basket. I believe I could teach them defense. That's what Adolph used to tell me down there at UK. So I think that AC has to get Newsom and Mullins on track if they're going to win this game. They're going to have scores and baskets. And on the other end, uh, you know, South Floyd's taking a lot of shots. Michael Hall needs to score some baskets. Michael Hall hasn't scored. And they're going to have to have him step up his second half, and I, I, as I've seen in the past, he probably will, as will Mullen. So we have some players on both teams that are going to have to step up and score some points for them as uh, we have something going on down at courtside. But uh, both teams are ready to play. It's a battle of the Beaver Creeks in Floyd County. Right Beaver against Left Beaver. Johnny Martin... Uh, mentioned last night that Garrett played McDowell, one of my teams, back in 1963, the only time, the other time that the Beaver Creeks had met each other, Johnny Ray, the Beaver Creeks That's had That's the it. only time? In the 15th region. Now, your team, 89, played in the finals of the region with Prestonburg. Right. In the right corner to Newman. Man, South what Floyd game that ball. was, Pete. What That's a game right. that was. In the corner, goes to Tackett for three. It's good. Rusty Tackett knocks it down, gives his team a two-point lead. And on the other end, the ball is thrown away by Travis Francis Tanusen. Turnover back to South Florida. In the turnover department that first half, uh, Coach uh, Allen Central had seven, and South Florida had four. Scott rebounds a missed shot by Tackett, gets it down to Newsom. We've got a charging foul on the far side as Meade jumped in and under Newsom, and then Newsom turned to go down the court and knocked him down for a charging call. Coach, I'll tell you something interesting about this. Uh, these officials here, uh, last, the, the officials that called last night's game and uh, tonight's game, uh, three of those officials call, have called the state tournament. So the quality of officiating is pretty good. All right, underneath the basket, it has a scramble for a missed shot by Meade, and it goes out of bounds to Rusty Tackle. Tackett throws it in outside the Meade, back to Rusty in the corner. Two-point lead for the Raiders now. Rusty gets it inside to Ray, gives it back to Rusty on the give and go with the left hand. A beautiful play. Full court pressure. And it's thrown away in the hands of Meade. Drives the middle, gives it to Newman. And that's a block by Francis. Good defense. Loses to Mullen. Down court for Hayes for three. Left wing. It's good. Can't leave him open, can you? You can't all, but he's hit. High three. Right. Hall, top of the key, drives, cut off the Mullen, 32 31. Hall driving, gives it back to Tackett. Tackett drives in the lane over to Newman. Wide open for three. It's good. Josh Newman. South Floyd, unafraid to shoot the threes. They'll shoot them all night like Paintsville. Francis throws it away. Picked up by Newman. Hall has it. Hall to Newman, underneath for two, and he puts it up to the screen. Pocket made it nice behind the back dribble to feed the hot ball to uh, Newman there, uh, as well as a good steal there. We want a timeout. Johnny Martin calls a timeout, and it's a 30-second timeout. We'll send it back to the station with the score of 35-31. South Floyd comes out ready to go. It's the Intermountain Sports Network. Sharing a big family moment, working hard from home, relaxing with a friend. Welcome to life in the broadband age, where reliable internet has never been more important. Gearheart Broadband keeps your family connected with consistent speeds up to one gig and plume adaptive Wi-Fi. Make sure your home's ready for life in the broadband age. Call our local service team or visit Gearheart Broadband online to learn more. 
fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution, encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. Shots that we have coming up. That's moving on line for two. Ready with the first one. He was found on the putback, and he rolls off the first free throw. 6.13 to play in the third quarter. Now Floyd on a comeback. Four-point lead. Newman ready for the second one. It's short. Francis with the rebound. Over to Mullen. South Floyd drops back half court into their looks like a zone defense. Scott has it. Drives in the lane. To Newsom in the lane. Newsom puts it up. Shot blocked by Ray. Mullins for three from the left wing is no good. Battle underneath. One tap, two tap. Comes away out deep to tackle. Tacking front court, driving. And he is called for some kind of contact with Larry Mullins. And it's Mullins is being called for the foul. I didn't see that one good. I couldn't see it for the rail here, Coach, but it, uh, the ref called a foul on Larry Mullins on the, on the hole. The ball was loose from the dribbler, from the ball handler, but it's back to South Floyd. Out deep it goes to Newman. John Mead comes out the point. Hall on the left wing. Guarded by Newsom. Inside the Mead. Goes over to Tyler Hall. He's in the game. Throws it away. Newsom on the break. On the run out to Mullins for two, and he puts it up and in. Nicely done with the left hand. I tell you what, it's a heat up in here in the Chevy Valley Sports Center. Hall out front. They're in offensive territory. Working the ball around that matchup zone. Back to Rusty Tackett, drives in, puts it up, misses it. Rebound, caught far, and it goes down in central. Full court pressure by the Raiders. Into Hayes, into Mullins. Mullins has the ball in front court. Long three from the left wing, no good. And the ball is knocked out of bounds by uh, Newsom. It'll be South Lloyd's ball in back court. 5.08 to play. Here in the third quarter, 35-33, South Floyd's made a comeback. Now they hold the lead. Hall, out front, cross court to tack. Tack it, back to Hall, right wing, drives the middle. Puts up a runner, no good. Scott on the long rebound for AC. There's a pretty good screen thrown that time. I don't know why somebody, somebody really caught a good one, didn't it? Mullins gets it underneath to Scott. He goes up for the shot, and he's fouled. That reminds me a little bit about that block, they, that charging block they put on Saul today, UK game. <laughs> they knocked Saul about 20 feet and didn't blow a thing. Didn't, didn't go, I didn't see it today. Uh, I didn't, but, but they, they hurt him, huh? It's an absolutely awesome game. It's a great day to live in Kentucky. We're in the SEC Championship game. We got all 58 district championship up here at the 15th region. That's first and off to Scott, but a big, big win for Kentucky as they'll be playing Ole Miss tomorrow in the championship game of the SEC. 87 78 they won today, Old Arkansas. Second one to Scott is good. 35 34, one point lead for the Raiders. Hall in the corner attack, it back to Hall, out front to me. They move it around rapidly in the corner attack it for three. No good. Me goes up far and puts it up and in. Good rebound to me. Down court to Newsom on the run out. He's fouled. And quick passing down the court by Mullins to Newsom. And somehow he got that shot off even after he got balled. Right Great hang time. He's very athletic. Very athletic. And usually Newsom hits a large percentage of his free throws. He's two of he, two tonight. He will go to the line for two. First one is good. Larry Mullins, truly, he says, get up in the L, gang, and they do. Central rises to the occasion to follow Mullins lead. Newsom second one is good. 37-36. One point deficit for the red. South Floyd in front court. Tyler Hall in the corner. Gives it to Rusty Tackett. Drives in. Double team. Puts up a runner off the glass. Rebound ball. Four Tackett gets his own board. Back uh -oh. to Hall for three. 
Can't hold a good man down long, Pete. That's his first field goal of the game. I was just going to say, Larry Mullins been doing an excellent job at that time. Too much breathing room, and he sinks it. Mullins has it down for it on the baseline. He's double teamed immediately. Gives to Hayes. Hayes out front to Mullins in the corner. Takes three-pointer on the way. No good. Air ball. Rebound for Tyler. Hall out to take it on the run out there. Breaking, moving down the court. And we've got a foul on contact. Rusty was spin moving into the lane. What was it there, Adam? I couldn't see it. Oh, an offensive foul on the spin move. AC, Knusen, front court, driving, pull up, 18-footer on the way, good. Very nice. They need to get to him. He's heating up. That's, that's a tough shot that he just hit both on the run. In the corner, Tyler Hall again for three. He misses. Francis all over the board. Gives it to Mullins. Mullins guard for Mikey Hall. But Mike decides to drop back. Mullins moves across the midside. Over to Newsom. Right side. Down to two, 3-14 play. Newsom takes his man into the lane for a jumper. No good. Hayes goes for it. Newsom goes for it. Newsom goes for it. Out of bounds. Two AC. Hayes was over Newman's back big time, but it will stay on AC's end. That referee under the basket sure puts a lot of lot into his calls. <laughs> AC gets an inbounds and balls out top. Y'all saw him last night on that last second shot. He, he made sure everybody knew it was good. Newsom drives the baseline with the ball, runs into Newman. He's called for traveling. 2.55 to play in the third quarter. Gray comes back into the lineup for Newman for Henry Webb's Raiders. Uh, talking about that 89 game, Prestonburg and uh, McDowell, the last finals for Floyd County team. Is that the last time? I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Last time. Inside it goes to me, back to Rusty Tackett. Tackett lays it up and in. They work that give and go really well in the lane. Hayes moves it down court. Covered out to Mullins, over to the right side to Newsom. Newsom takes, drives in, gets it to Mullins. Mullins for three. In and out. Francis goes for it. Loose ball. Oh, man. Knocked out of bounds by Scott and Francis. Four-point lead for the Raiders. 2.24 to play in the third quarter. The winner of this game will play Wednesday afternoon at Rupp Arena. Both teams giving it 100%. Pete, this is for all the marbles. Chance to the Sweet 16 to be the one of the Elite 16 in State Kentucky. Pack it, left wing drives, cut off. The Hall in the corner, Tyler Hall, he's open. Misses. Francis with the rebound. Throws it down court to Newsom. Newsom drives in, takes on Ray, runs in to Ray, and he's called for blocking, I believe. If he'd have held his ground, I believe he could have got, might, might have had a chance to get the charge, but he went up with him and fell back. Right. Right, he had good possession. 1.59 to play in the third quarter. As Newsom to the foul line for two. First one is there. How's he doing on free throw line, Ken? He's five for five. All right, good foul shoot. He and Larry Mullins both. Up with the second one, six for six. 42-40. Raiders on top of two, down to Tyler Hall in the corner of Rusty Tackett, back it back out, drives the wing, gives it Mikey Hall for three, top of the key, he's no good. There's John Reed on the board, put back no good, he stays on the board, he loses it, trip. Hayes gets it. Allen Central played good defense there. Chance to tie. They take the lead. In the corner to Newsom. Newsom guarded by Tackett, comes out front on the dribble, trying to dribble penetration to Mullins in the right corner. He comes outside on the dribble. They open up the middle so they can drive through. Mullins tries to take Hall. Hall backs off, gives it to Newsom. Newsom comes out third front on the dribble with Tackett on him, tries to break through, does. Finds the seam, goes to the hoop, up, hang time, and boy, what beautiful hang time. Newsom has an east foul. That's about an automatic two points. As Newsom can do after the rest of the game, he's either going to make it or get fouled. He's just explosive to the bucket. 
He took tack at that time on the dribble, made a shake and bake move and went all the way and was fouled. Up with the first one, he rolls it in. What is that, Ken? Seven for seven? Seven for seven to John Newsom. If he makes this and it's tied up. Ready? And there it is. It's all tied again. 109 to go. Third quarter. Mikey Hall moves it across. Looks over 1 3 1 zone. Rusty Tech it out front. Over to Mike Hall. To me. Hall. Inside to me. Back to Tech it for three. No good. Too strong. Meade rebounds it. In the corner. Back to Tyler Hall. Over to Mikey Hall. And Coach Webb jumps up and says, spread the court, fellas. I've seen enough of this, 35 seconds go. Calls out number one. What is that, Coach? I believe that goes to Mikey again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we saw that before, didn't we? Mead driving, gives it to Mikey. He's way out here mid-court. Mullins on it. AC is extending their zone defense some. Trying to trap now out of a little. 12 seconds. 10 seconds. Tack it out front with the ball. To me, he looks at the clock, drives into the lane. Throws it away. Mullins on the run out. Mikey Hall, 40-footer at the buzzer. No good. He recovered that loose ball. And we've got a tie ball game at the end of the three. It's 42-42 all. Don't go away. We'll take you to the station. Be right back. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. <laughs> oh, you're not going to believe this. What's going on? The neighbors got hacked again. Weird. We never get hacked. Nope. No, we don't. With families spending more time at home together this year, it's a great time to level up your internet for the speed and Wi-Fi you need to power game consoles and computers at peak performance. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to upgrade. Five and also live on the radio, Double X Radio, 104.9, 105.3 FM. Glad to have you along with us on this Saturday night championship night, the boys 15th regional tournament. South Floyd. Allen Central, it's all tied at 42. And we got a fresh eight up. It's the last quarter play. Anything can happen. Keep it here for this exciting finish. Back to Pete Grigsby for your play by play. Thank you, Adam. As Mullins has the ball. Backcourt moving across the mid right now. All tied up. Trying to open up that middle. He starts to weave after Scott. Scott drives in, puts up the long run, and misses it. And there's Tyler Hall on the board. South Floyd doing a good job on the defensive glass. Inside the mead, he drives, and we've got a contact as he went to the hoop. Got their feet tangled up down there, and uh, Mead got fouled, going to go to the line, probably. Rodney Scott just picked up his third foul. And it's going to come in off the baseline. No ball the check. It'll be Rusty Tackett inbound underneath his own basket. Sees Newell. Newell tries to spin. Puts it up off the glass. No good. Hayes with the rebound. Gives it to Mullen. And they run down the court to set up their offense. And South Floyd scurries back on defense. Newsom in the corner. Right wing now. He backs up. They're playing a little bit of that cat and mouse game that they use against Shelby Valley right now. Long three out front. Newsom. No good. And Newman's on the board. Nobody for AC on that offensive glass. Pack it, moves across to Hall. Hall for three. And it rolls off. But there's Francis on the defensive glass. Mullins moving quickly down the right side. Finds the seam, goes into the lane, and we've got a whistle and a foul. There's, uh, there's six players on the floor, three from each team that haven't been out of the game tonight for a rest. Bet our fans could name those three. <laughs> Hayes, it's a foul. Goes back to AC underneath his own basket. Looking, looking, inbounds way out deep. He throws it to Mullins. He runs it down with Mike Hall. What a classic matchup. Larry Mullins, Mike Hall. 
Boy, Down in Central battle. South Floyd, this is a great one. It certainly is. What a battle. Dosen. Ball is for Dosen. Dosen has the ball. Dribbles back out front. Still dribbling with the ball to Mullins. He moves out front on the dribble. Hoping to find that open seam in the middle. Over to Scott. Scott drives the baseline. Puts it up on the run. Misses. And Tyler Hall's on the board. Tyler's doing a good job on the board tonight for the sophomore. Rust attack it. Tries to answer on the baseline. Driving. Cut off. Reverse layup. And we've got a foul. As he tried to reverse layup. I thought he was too far under to try that. Ball. He was too, too far under. He just left his feet. He had no choice. I tell you, when Rusty Tackett goes after go, though, he makes things happen. And he's had a huge tournament for these South Floyd Raiders. He sure has. Tackett has 17 points tonight to lead his team. Tackett ready for number one. And it goes in and out. If South Floyd wins tonight, they'll make their first trip to the Sweet 16. If Allen Central wins, it'll be their second one, Adam. They went 1994 under coach Johnny Martin. Second one on the way. Good. One point lead. 6.15 to play. They get an inbounds to Mullins. Mullins moves it across the mid stripe over to Hayes on the left wing. Hayes moving with Tackett on it. Gives it to Scott. Scott driving on Newton. Into the lane. Puts up a runner. No good. Falls the shot. Puts it up on the put back. Misses. Tips it once. Twice, Look here, what five, a warrior. Four rebounds for Scott, and he still didn't knock it down, but he's fouled. Okay, Scott usually don't look for his shot a whole lot, but he's making moves to the basket and everything for the big man, and actually looking pretty good on it. Stayed with it, you got to give him credit. He, he did that in the all-A tournament. He uh, he went after the ball. Went, went for his shot. He looked for his shot a lot down there. Coach Webb is out pleading his case to the referees. Josh, uh, Josh Newman had a uh, bloody eyes as above his right eye was pouring the blood. He's having to go to the locker room. And Coach Webb talking about the contact underneath, I imagine. He said there's an elbow that was shown. I seen him give the elbow sign. And lost in all the emotion here is a, the fact that was a big, big foul as John Mead just picked up his four. That could hurt the Raiders. As no far as ball out. handling, John Mead doing a lot of ball handling for South Floyd. <laughs> well, the referees are looking to see if there are any blood spots on the floor, and Newman has to go to the dressing room. He's got a cut over the eye, and Charles Ray comes in for him. It, it must be a, a pretty good cut because you can see it from up here. And John Mead, when you lose him, you don't only lose ball handling, you can lose rebound and then scoring too. He's all around complete player for this Raider team, and that could come into play with still 5.53 to go in this ball game. One point lead for the Raiders. Not ready on the first free throw, he nails it. 43 off, still tied. I believe this game's gonna go down to water, fellas. <laughs> what makes you think so? <laughs> that's, the, that's all we've had in this tournament. Is Scott ready for a second one? Short, way short. Mikey Hall gets it on the board. Dribbles it across, four times. Mead out front, over to Tyler Hall, or left side, back out front. Yep. Rusty Tackett, cross court to Tyler Hall, out front to Hall, to Mikey Hall, in the post to Mead. And there's a long three <laughs> by Tyler Hall. And it almost hits these uh, windows up here at the top. <laughs> Talk about a huge six men off the bench. This whole tournament, Tyler Hall's been sparking it from outside. And answering on the other end is Jeremy Hazel to pull up Jay off the glass. Hall in front court now. Over to Tyler Hall. And we've got a foul on Francis. He goes out there, tries to guard him closely, and instead he fouls him. And that's four on Travis Francis. You don't generally see a sophomore coming off the bench that, uh, that gets that involved in the offense. Oh, you know, not all does. He has simply shot the eyes out of some beautiful rainbow shots for threes tonight. As South Floyd has the ball now, no one in the bonus at this point. In the corner, the title of the three. What can I say, folks? He's the center of their offense right now. And something down court going on here. 
Bowman comes out of the dressing room with Keith Smallwood, who took it downtown. Put them in the dressing room to see what they could do. They got some ice on them. Man, this is intense. Mullen, this team down before. Jeremy Hayes, back to Mullen. Mullen drives through, gives it Newsom for three. Newsom nailed it. Absolutely, write it down. Gave him too much room, and he makes some plays. 49-48, 441 to go. Tyler Hall for three again. He missed that one. I was ready to say it's good. Hey, it looked good. Scott Penusen down by one, 49-48. They're spreading the offense to the middle. No middle man at all now for Allen Central. Coach Barton giving Newsom some directions, drives the middle, puts it up, <laughs> and misses it. Trying to draw a foul. He should have put that up with the left hand. Yeah, I thought he would, Coach. In front court, and to meet at the post, spin move in the lane, has a shot blocked, picked up by Ray. Ray puts it up in there. Alert play by Charles Ray. Newsom on the right side, driving. Cut off, out to the ball. No, he loses it. Tyler Hall picks it up. John Mead, John drives in, shot up and in. Well, that was slithered in, that was slithered in the basket. All right, we have a 53-48 score. South Floyd on top, fellas. Let's keep it right here and talk about it, Adam. South Floyd, faithful, going wild, and boys, 15th regional championships on the line, and South Floyd up by five, 53-48. Coach Johnny Ray Turner, Johnson Central Eagles last year. Tell us a little bit about your game and then just your feelings after it, knowing you was going down to the Sweet 16 at Rupp Arena. Well, you know, uh, Adam, last year in that uh, championship game, we had a uh, young man step up and, uh, and hit, hit three straight threes against Michael in that championship game to uh, help pull us out of that. And uh, it was just a... He was our sixth man earlier in the year, and he started coming off the bench and early in the year, and then later on in the game, he, he became a starter, and uh, he could hit those threes, and it really, I think that was one of the keys to our win last year. You know, we had some great play out of a lot of great players, but that was one of the most exciting times of my life, was uh, uh, taking my team to the state tournament and being out there on Rupp Arena. Was that the Castle boy? He Castle, yes. Yeah, I remember that. Good shooter. Well, he was that night anyway for you. <laughs> he, he was a good shooter. A good, he wanted to penetrate more than he wanted to shoot the three. Allen Central inbounds the ball. Five. And we got a five-second call on Francis. Big stand for the Raiders. That's a big turnover down there, Ken. Yes, it is. South Floyd, 3.49 to play. In the corner, Rusty Tackett. Out to Tyler Hall, intercepted by Hayes. Hayes all alone, goes in, lays it up for three. Great defense, anticipated play by Hayes on that cross-court pass from Hall to uh, Tackett. Intercepted. Now, South Floyd with the ball, ahead for three. Mikey Hall in the corner of Tyler Hall. Tyler back out to Mike Hall. Drive all the way in the lane. Gets underneath the Ray. Oh, Puts another big one. Charles Ray coming up with a couple of big ones here in the fourth quarter. 55-50. Five-point deficit for the running Reds. Bones drives in to Hayes for three from the left wing. Oh, good. There's Ray with the board. He gives it to me. South Floyd in control right now. Coach Webb wants to uh, spread the court. Coach Martin's gonna come out and trap him on that. Hall is trapped out front. We got a timeout. Let's keep it here, fellas. The score 55 to 50, 2.30 to play. That was a heads up call by Coach uh, Webb there. Mikey was in trouble with the trap and he called timeout. That's a rule change that they made last year that the coach can call a timeout. Uh, used to, they couldn't. They had to go through one of the players. Good rules change. Well, Adam.
Jeff, what do you think about the last two and a half minutes? I think it's going to be exciting one way or the other. And I guarantee you we're going to have a 58th district team representing us down at the state tournament. <laughs> I was talking to Judge Thompson out there, and he said uh, Floyd County wins tonight. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, I tell you, what a feeling for these two teams. I tell you, Is I it? love being up here doing this, but I'd love to be down there on the court doing what they're doing. Uh, they're the center that. of attention. That's what it's all about right there. And, and these teams and coaches, this is what they practice for all year long, and, and, and it's just a, a show. Adam, before we get off here, I want to I want to congratulate Coach Wilt, Philip Wireman and Johnson Center Golden Lady Eagles right. for their win. Uh, I know he works, puts a lot of time and effort into his program, and it, it's paid off for him. South Floyd now, after timeout, has the ball. We got a, a trap on tackle, but he's called for foul. That's Jeremy Hayes. Send Rusty to the free throw line. He's been doing a good job there, hadn't he, Ken? Well, he's uh, one of three tonight. Looks like he needs to put a little more arch on his shot than he's been using. He's ready for the bonus. And he doesn't get it. Short, Scott with the rebound for AC. Mullins on the move, finds the seam, drives, kicks it over, and Charge feet. He's called for charging after he passes the ball. He's going in the corner for a three-point shot, but he's called for charging. And we've got a bonus on the other end. That was excellent defense from a Raider. Did you get who that was, Ken, that was set up down there to take the charge? Uh, no, I didn't, because I was, like everybody else, watching the pass I that went out of bounds, and <laughs> evidently he released the ball before he made contact. Whoever it was did the right thing, and uh, Larry Mullins just a little bit out of control when he passed it off. Uh, apparently, it was Mikey Hall, because he's going to free throw line for the bonus. First one, too strong. He misses. Rebound to Francis. South Floyd's missed two from the end of the bonus here in a row, Pete. Hayes in the corner to Mullins. Mullins drives. Gives it to Scott. Scott to Hayes. Driving, gets it to Newsom. Newsom to Francis. Mullins in the corner for three is short. He didn't have a good look. He hurried his shot that time. Well, Allen Central is obviously going to foul South Floyd, but they've got to hit those foul shots. Tyler Hall's open for two. Pass or, it or do that. <laughs> Raiders in the driver's seat. Ten and a half to go. Newsom for three, and it's all for Mark Bad. Raiders on the rebound. Seven point lead. We've got a foul in backcourt. Okay, guys. At this point, the South Floyd hits her free throws. They should be bringing the championship to South Floyd. Tell you what, no matter uh, how this game comes out, you've got to commend both both groups on both sides of the floor, the fans, the coaches, the players. They've all done an excellent job tonight. John me to the free throw line. His team leading by seven with the bonus. 1.23 to play. Up with the first one, and it's good. There's your answer if they make or miss. <laughs> Meet up with the second one all the way, and it's good. Nine-point lead. They're in the driver's seat. Mullins driving for the hoop, runs it in, lays it up off the glass for two. We got a timeout by John Martin. Let's keep it here again, fellas, because it's a 30-second timeout, and Adam, I don't know how they can get back into this game, but with a three-point shot, it is possible. It's about a three-possession game right now. You know, Coach, uh, back in 1990, I, I was uh, coaching at uh, McDowell, and we were down seven points with 40 seconds to go, and we won in regulation. And it was so you're, it's never over till it's over. And you can bet your bottom dollar that Johnny Martin won't give up till final buzzer. And he'll have his team going full blast, pulling out all the stops to try to get his team back into this game and, and get a possible championship. South Floyd definitely with time on their side right now. All right, ready 
for action. Rusty Tackett in backcourt gets it into Mike Hall, back to Rusty. Rusty driving down, it goes to Newman in the corner to Meade. They run the clock, and Newsom fouls Newman across the way. We're not going to let much time run off without a foul. Without no. foul. Boy, this Tyler Hall, he's really broke this game open, hasn't he, for the Raiders? Sure has. He's at least to this point. Newman misses the first one. They're in the double bonus. As uh, South Floyd, three of 11 from the line tonight. Second one is good. Four for 12. Eight-point lead. Mullins driving to the basket. Puts it up and in. He scores. They count it. That was a tough shot. Whoa. What a shot. With the pressure on, he puts it home, and he'll set the line for one. A big break. They can, look, they can look for him to do that the rest of this game. Just next minute, he's going to just drive it and try to make something happen. This game ain't nowhere close to being over. 60 to 54. Mullins to the free throw line. Has a chance to cut it to five. And he does. It's a five-point game. A minute four. Full court press by Allen Central. They get it in to Mikey Hall. He loses it. Goes up to Jeremy Hayes. Hayes to Mullins. Mullins over to Newsom. Newsom fakes. Drives in, puts it up on the run. We got a charging call. And no doubt about that with John Meade in great position to draw that charge. I'll tell you what, he was like a, a, a rock standing in there. Well, they don't move, do they? Take those charges. I'll tell you what, it's tough to forget one to do that, but now it's a it's a it's a valuable tool. Yes, it is. Well, Alan Central losing a golden opportunity to cut into that lead a little more. Only 52 seconds to go. South Floyd with the ball up by five, 60 55. Inbounds it goes to me. He's double teaming him back court. Needs help. He calls timeout wisely, and with that, we'll keep it here again. With 47.410 seconds to go, it's a five point game, and South Floyd has it in the back court. Henry Webb wants to timeout, talk it over again. So does Johnny Martin. So, do you think that they're selecting somebody to foul? Bounds play, uh, Henry will set up everybody in backcourt, won't it? That, this is how we broke down. Al Alan Sickles come out with a real good uh, full, full, full court press. And last year, I like to use a 1 4 set to try to get the ball in. That get, he's playing two men back, so that's going to free somebody up to, to get it up the court. I don't know if that's what he'll do, but that's, that's the way we did it last year. I guarantee you, he's setting up something there, isn't he, Adam? That he is. He, they're getting the ball in in a dangerous situation right under the basket uh, right now every time that they get it in. I like the way the defense there is it's either Francis or Hayes on the ball out of bounds. They're tall, got long arms, and they sort of block the vision of the boy taking it in bounds. That's good defense right there. On they, the they could possibly look for a run out on this end because all, all five bounds the players are on the other end. Rusty Tackett, wind bounds it. It's come the length of court. That's Hayes with it on defense. They get it inside to throw it away. But we got a foul. And Larry Mullins, I believe, is fouled out of the ball game. And he's going to go over and have a talk with his team before he checks on out. And he's telling them, we got to have it here. And this is for it all. Boy, that's a tough break for Johnny Martin, running red. You know, uh, that, that was close to a turnover, Coach, and uh, Larry Mullins was alert going after the ball and just happened to run into John Meade doing so. Bad break for Larry. Yeah, John Meade, the lone Raider that has shot well from the line tonight. He's two for two. Yates will be Johnny Martin's selection off the bench. And that definitely hurts Allen Central's chances at a comeback. Is Larry Mullins, a downtown threat, and also he handles the ball so well, getting it up court against the pressure, so let's see what happens. John Meade for two. Big free throws, 46 and a half seconds to play. Up with the first one. No good. Too strong. It's still a two-possession game. 
And if he makes it, it will be. Up in the second one, it's good. He rolled that one in. Newsom now is moving down for it. Down to six. Over to Hayes. Hayes won't shoot. There's a three-pointer on the way. It's short. Mikey Hall with a long rebound. And he is fouled in backcourt by Scott. South Floyd Faithful smells one. They smell a victory. It's getting closer and closer. 34 seconds to play. Mikey Hall to the free throw line. How many times has Hall. he been there, Ken? Hall is 0 for 1 tonight as he missed the front end of the 1 and 1 earlier here in the fourth quarter. But he knows how important these are. He's ready to shoot two. That's a double bonus. Up with the first one, and it rolls off. Six point lead for the Raiders. And all the Raiders moving back forward. So if he misses, AC's got the board, but he doesn't. 62 55, seven point lead. Yates gives it Newsom. Newsom driving through. Puts it up and misses a layup. South Floyd just let him go unmolested and he missed the layup. You still have to play defense in this situation, don't you, Coach? I think you do. 24 seconds on the clock. It's out of bounds. Allen Central still has it on their end. Hayes looking, looking to Yates. Back to Hayes. Hayes throws it away. That's it. Paul has it. 201 break to Rusty Pack and he throws it away. This is all but over. 14 seconds to go. 14.7. Coach Webb off South Floyd up on his feet. He knows it's in. It's in the old ice box. Listen for three. It's there. Seven points there. We got time out. 62-58. So I don't know about this game, fellas. Uh, it looks like with seven seconds that South Floyd should have this game won, but anything can happen. Anything can happen. That's, that's what I say. You got, I mean, that was a tough shot he hit. Uh, of course, Newsom's capable of hitting those kinds. But uh, you, you've, got to, you've got to play this game all the way. You can't, play, you can't just play token defense at this stage of the game. Of course, you got the four-point play now, and uh, short of that, South Floyd should have this one in the bag, but they still got to play this final seven seconds and play head smart and don't make any mistakes. What this is going to do for the program of South Floyd. How many timeouts does uh, each team have? We, uh, we don't have that here. The winner but, of this... If I'd have told you before tonight's game that uh, Allen Central's going to hold Michael Hall to four points, what would you think would happen? You think South Floyd would have been in trouble. Right. <laughs> but Mr. Tyler Hall came off the pitch. And Absolutely. Said, Michael, do you need some help? He said, yeah, get in here, partner. And that's Rusty Tackett. has the ball. The winner of this game will play Wednesday afternoon, the second game of the opening round of the state tournament at Rupp Arena. They play either Bell County or Clay County. Inbounds, it goes to meet. He's immediately fouled. And now Meade wants some cheer. Well, I tell you what, I know for both you guys, this has to, this has to be something sentimental to you guys. McDowell, McDowell, South Floyd now, after the uh, conversion of Will Wright McDowell, getting her first regional championship here. Well, Adam, I'll tell you, it, it, it means a lot. You've got two great coaches down there on both benches, and, you know, I'm, I'm especially proud of Coach Webb, who, who played for me in 1989, that team, that, that game that you were talking about. So I know this, this is special for him. He shoots the second one, and he misses both of them. There's Yates with it. Yates driving, shoots a three, left-hander up, no good air ball. Rusty tackle. It's over! It's over! The game is over! The Raiders, 3,000 of them, are running all the fans out on the floor celebrating for their first trip to the Sweet 16. What a classic matchup. Right Beaver against Left Beaver in Floyd County, and everybody's on the floor from South Floyd. I'm telling you what a celebration, fellas. And with that, South Floyd wins its first regional title after eight years of consolidation between McDowell and Wheelwright with the Colts.
from McDowell in the red leading away and certainly with a lot of good fans from both communities, Wheelwright and McDowell. So we'll take it to the station right now as the celebration goes on. Coach Webb gets ice. They're carrying him around the floor and they're throwing ice and ice water all over him, but he doesn't care. <laughs> That's the second shirt. In two weeks, that he's that he's going to have to throw in the in the old garbage can because that's how that thing stained. <laughs> no, I don't think he'll throw in the garbage can. He'll be putting that up as memorabilia. <laughs> okay, PD, our buddy PD just came by. He enjoyed it. I missed him up here in the booth this year, but he does a good job. Jake, we'll see you. We're yeah. going to follow these Raiders. Everybody should go down there and follow them uh, to Rough Arena and. While they're celebrating, we'll take it to the station, and we'll be back with other comments and halftime celebrations and interviews and whatever we have, all the stats and numbers of the ball game. This is your Intermount Sports Network. Gearheart Broadband gets solutions for your small business right. Fiber connects you to the cloud with speeds up to one gig with digital voice, the right video solutions, and local support. Make the right call. Gearheart Broadband. Now's your chance for a great deal on smoke and fast internet from Gearheart Broadband. Upgrade to the smoldering speed you need, up to one gig, and add Plume Adaptive Wi-Fi to reach every corner of your home. Experience no lag gaming, your favorite music, web surfing, HD video streaming, and connect to the latest smart devices. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or click Gearheart Broadband for a great offer today. When you add up all the Wi-Fi connected devices in your home these days, you'll be surprised how many there are and how much bandwidth they're using. Do the math. It just may add up to needing faster internet and Wi-Fi. Good thing Gearheart Broadband has reliable download speeds up to one gig and Plume Adaptive Home Wi-Fi to keep all your devices well connected. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or visit Gearheart Broadband online for a great offer. Okay, welcome back to the post-game championship celebration. South Floyd Raiders, 2000-2001, 15th regional champs. As they defeat Allen Central tonight, 62-58. to And another barn burner here at Shelby Valley where we have just ex witnessed an excellent all-round 15th regional tournament boys and girls, Ken. Yes, we have. As we've had so many dramatic games like this, it's just been unbelievable. It's been a fantastic tournament. And right now, Pete Grigsby Jr. is down courtside, and we'll be taking it to him here in just a bit. We'll go ahead and get his mic hooked up here and, and uh, let's see here which one's going over here. Okay. Congratulations to Coach Henry Webb and the South Floyd Raiders. Any post-game comments from you? Well, I just I noticed an interesting stat here. South Floyd shot 15 more shots for the game than Allen Central. And uh, Allen Central shot a better percentage, but South Floyd was fortunate enough to get more shots off. So that's, uh, I think that's one of Coach Webb's philosophies, is he wants to shoot more shots than the other team. Uh, he wants to get it up, shoot the shot as quick as he can. And uh, obviously it's just paid off for him this year. Okay, we right now, we got Pete Grigson Jr. on the court. Let's take it to him before we get some more stuff. All right, we're ready down here celebrating with South Floyd. I tell you, they Beaver Creek, Will Ryan, McDowell people are going wild. Boy, they were explosive tonight. Come on over here, guys. I have three fans, great fans. This is the first time since 1973 that left me the Free School State Tournament. And who was it went then, Larry Mullen? McDowell. McDowell. It seemed like you played for McDowell. I played for here, Coach. I played for you in 1973. And, uh, we're proud of the Raiders. You proud of the Raiders? Yeah, we're very proud of them. We got one here from McDowell. Used to play. And here's one from Will Wright. PJ, what do you think about that win? Oh, it is so nice, Coach, to get back to Rough Arena. Last time I was down there was 1970 and 71 sitting on the bench, and I can't wait to get there. And what about you predicted this last week? 
Yeah, I said they was going to win, and they did. Huh? I said they was going to win, and they done it. You did, didn't you? You told me over at Betsy Lane that you were going to win, and you did. Yep. And hey, I had no, no, no disbelief in them. I always believed in them. All right, I want to move around down here a little bit. Stay with me. I'll try to corral some of these players if I can. So, uh, boy, this is a celebration and a half. Come over here, Newman. Great tournament, young man. Thank you. How's that eye doing? It's feeling all right. Look up there so they can get a close-up of that eye. He's got a pretty bad cut on his eye, but he hung in there and played a really good ball game. And without you, my friend, they wouldn't be going to state tournament. I want to tell you that. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Allen Central. That's a great team. They worked hard all season long. And Josh, you're the only senior on the starting five, aren't you? No, John Mead's also a senior. You and John, is that the only seniors on the team? No, there are three more. They don't get to play a lot, but they contribute a whole lot. Okay. Now, we want you to celebrate and be ready, though, to play in Rupp Arena. We'll be down there following you, buddy. All Floyd County will. We'll be ready. Okay. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Take care of yourself and take care of that eye. Great tournament, young man. I'm going to go over here and see <laughs> Hey, Donnie, come out here for a second. Come here, come here. Huh? These are two great fans up there in Little Beaver Creek, fellas. What do you think about that? Pete, I remember in 70 when we had Danny Thornsbury, Danny Johnson, Ricky Van Over, Buddy Boy Johnson. My sister was cheerleader. Been a long time coming, buddy. These kids is the hardest working bunch of kids I've seen. They was 13 and 10. Now they're 21 and 10. But well, don't forget 73 now. McDowell went. I remember McDowell. <laughs> <laughs> they played hard, didn't they, You Pete? talked about my buddy Frankie Francis went in 70. That was a great, great, great year for Allen said they played a great game. They played a great. Both teams from our uh, district came to play great, didn't they? Donnie, I love it. Either team, I love. I love out the good sportsmanship. But I like for our kids. I like for any kids. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's something they'll never forget, ain't it, Pete? You know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. It's Those a thrill. Yeah. The boy goes through after me. Mount, Pete, it was. It was a great game. Great, people got the money. It was a great regional tournament. And thank you guys for supporting every team, ain't it, Donnie? It's been great. Pete, get, Mike, get Mike over here for some of the boys. Donnie, what do you think about that, buddy? Pete, it's a great feeling right now. These kids will remember this night as long as they can live. You know, you, you just get certain moments in your life that you'll have these nights, and this is one of them. You've been through a couple yourself there, so, you know, I think it's it's great for this kid, great for our community. If it's solid day school, needs stuff like this, and this will bring a lot of our community together, I think. It certainly has, and, and I want to talk to some of these boys here. Here, Michael, come up here. Come on over here. I've got Michael Hall, a great sophomore guard. Michael, how's it feel to win the regional championship oh my God, in sophomore? It's, it's unbelievable. Best feeling of my life. It's, we deserve it. That's all I got to say. We deserve it. Well, you fought hard all year long, and you came back in the last three weeks of the season. Well, hey, know. come here, John. Hey, hey, John. Yeah. Well, same repeat from last week. Come over here, Tyler. I'm telling you guys on left Beaver Creek. I don't know what we're going to do with you. I guess you'll have to go down. down the state, buddy. We're in the state tournament. That's right. Where are we going? We're gone. Tyler, you did some great shooting that last half. Well, I just tried to help my team out. Uh, I've not stepped up that much in the last few tournament games, and I just tried to help them out today. <laughs> I'm glad he decided to help you guys out. Yeah, I'm very excited. I, I love him, Dad. I love him like a brother. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, yes. John. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do with you, buddy. You go outside, you go inside, you rebound. You put those 360 moves on everybody. Kind of tough. tough Where do you get? Ain't it, Pete? Uh, you are tough well, to handle. You, so you're like a snake going through there. Uh, where do you get those moves? Oh, Michael teaches them to me. Michael. Michael. Yeah. Yeah, we have a practice. session every day at practice. Okay. We work on these things. Uh, I was yeah. off a little bit. <laughs> We're saving it. State. Okay. Now, fellas, you know where you play now. Next week, you play. Who we play? You we play. Don't care. You don't care. Either Clay County or Bell County, and it's the second game Wednesday afternoon. So celebrate and enjoy it. But now we we, we want you to win that one down there. Represent. That's right. Represent. Represent the 15th region. Represent, Represent fine. Okay. Same Thank you, guys. Thing. Tyler. Rusty. Hi, guys. Who do you play for? Sam. 
Hey, Rusty. Hey, Big. Great Great God of mine. We got to say hello to you. Yeah, but I love okay. you. I watched you guys play all year long. You came on like gangbusters. Yeah, but it's, it's all because of the fans. But if it wasn't for the fans, we wouldn't be doing nothing right now. Okay, Rusty. Congratulations. Now you'll play Bell County or Clay County in a tournament next week. So celebrate good, but you'll be ready to win that game, won't you? Yeah, we're going to go down and kick some butt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Left Beaver Creek's back in business again, boys. We'll be going down there watching you play in the state tournament. Thank you, Pete. Congratulations, Rusty. Yeah, thanks. Congratulations to all of you, all the cheerleaders. What do you think about that? Who's number one? All right. We're going to walk over here and, uh, and say hello to Charles Ray. How you doing, buddy? I'm pretty good. Good job. Well, I'm mean, just telling you, eh? Huh? Just telling you, it feels great right now. Uh, you had some putbacks out underneath that basket that were crucial for the team. You know yeah. that? Yeah. I just hope that's all going in, too. Outstanding work, young man. We're proud of you. You're only a sophomore, aren't you? Yeah, I'm just a sophomore. And I still got two more years there. Yeah, well, that's great. Well, you know what it's like. I'm telling you, going down there to the state tournament. Oh, yeah. I'm going to love every moment of it, too. Well, we, we're glad to see uh, Left Beaver Creek back in the state. Yeah. It's been since 1973 when my Daredevils went. Well, they, I'm going 28 to years. Can you, you're not that old, are you? No, I, I'm just 17. <laughs> Good job. Thanks, man. Congratulations. We'll see you down at Rupp Arena, partner. Oh, yeah, you know. Going to walk over here and see if I can get hold of uh, Coach Webb, but they're, they're crowded up so much around him. Hey, Key. Congratulations, buddy, up there, son. <laughs> I believe you played the game tonight. You're so wet. Yeah, I broke a sweat. <laughs> Actually, they bounced the entry, and I'm so big they couldn't miss me. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, that's what it was. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, these boys have fought back all year long. They came from adversity down about 50 points from Shelby Valley to win the region. That's a great testimony of their uh, courage and their spirit. You know, it, you know, Pete, I'm new to the game, but I will say this much. They are the most unselfish bunch of boys that you've ever met in your life. Uh, they're the only kids I know that two of them will have a wide open layup and they'll hold it up so a third guy can come through and score. I can't say enough about them. It was a great moment. My hat's off to Allen Central. Uh, Johnny Martin runs a class program. Larry Mullins, outstanding ball player. Can't say enough about them. But how about them Raiders? Ah, well, all right. All right, we're getting ready to cut the net down. Did you boys get your piece of the net? Oh, yeah, got it. Okay, me. good. There goes Henry Webb up. He's going to cut the last string down. I tell you what, that is a thrill. Follow me over here if you can. Hey, Coach, I got to say something to you. Congratulations, partner. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I'm telling you, it feels good to have that net around your neck, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just a tremendous feeling right now. You know, to win the All-A 50 Division last year, lose four seniors to come back and win the region this year. It's just a tremendous feeling. I tell you, I can't say enough about you because you and your team show a lot of heart and courage and spirit to come back the last three weeks of the season. And do what you did here is fantastic. Well, uh, you know, I don't think a lot of people gave us a lot of credit. Um, I would like to say I don't know where Brian went, but I'd like to be uh, in the mountaintop team once. I, th I think we've earned it. Uh, but, no, uh, they do a super job. I'm just joking with Brian. Uh, you know, I just can't say that about our kids, the heart they've shown down the stretch. We, we were never, we were never non-believing that we could go. We, we've been very focused. We thought we was the best team in the region all year long. Guess who I had up in the booth with me tonight? Help me with the play the play. Uh, he told me he was going to be up there, and I, you know, I just want to say a special thank you to Coach Turner. He's been a tr tremendous influence in my life, and you know, I just can't say enough about him. Okay, Coach Henry Webb, congratulations. Once again, 
Boy, can it be down there back to you Wednesday afternoon in Rupp Arena, partner. It's hard to believe. It is just unbelievable. And I would like to say hats off to Coach Martin and now Central Rebels. I really believe he's one of the best coaches in the state, and I, I really admire him. Okay, Coach Henry Webb, there you have it. Our after-game post-game post show. Right back to you, Adam, up in the booth. Take it away. Okay, Pick Rixby Jr. Giving it to you the way you like it here on Intermountain Sports Network. Post-game interviews, pre-game interviews. He gets the job done and really, really lets you know what's going on behind the scenes at all these sporting events here throughout the 15th region, Ken. And we still got some uh, ceremonies going on down here, so uh, we can tune in to that. And then we'll get the final stats and comments of tonight's championship game that went to South Floyd Raiders. sure what this uh, trophy was for. The winner of the free throw competition, this trophy also presented by Mr. Welch. From Pike County Central High School, Mr. Jeff Remick. And now for the three-point shooting competition. This award presented by Mr. Ricky Mead, the runner-up in the three-point competition representing McGuffin County High School, Mr. Adam Helton. The winner of the three-point competition from Belfry High School, Mr. Bobby Gillum. This award will be presented by Mr. Paul David Dotson. That was, Ken, that was those uh, yeah, halftime competitions. Right. Our next trophy is the Spirit Pep Traveling Trophy. This trophy is presented to a cheering squad in recognition of the spirit and pep shown by its fans. This same trophy will be used each year and will travel to the school which has best shown positive support for its team and throughout the tournament. In addition to the trophy, the winning school will also receive a check for $500. The proceeds from this check are to go to the senior class of the winning school. This trophy will be presented by Mr. Forrest Dell Johnson and the winner of this year's Spirit Pep Award, McGoffin County High School. <laughs> Our next award, is the team free throw trophy. This trophy is presented to the team with the highest percentage of so shots made for any game. Nine shots have to have been attempted for the team to qualify. This award will be presented by Mr. Rick Newsom, the winning school which hit nine of 10 free throws for 90%, McGoffin County High School. And now the individual medallions presented to the runner-up team. These, reward, these awards will be presented by Mr. Kevin Stumbo and Mr. Raveen Ratliff. With the players for the Allen Central Running Rebels, please report to center court for your runner-up medallions.
And now Mr. Dennis Hillen will present the runner-up coach's <laughs> plaque to coach Johnny Martin of Allen Central. And now for the runner-up team trophy, presented by David Tackett and Paul Dotson, the Allen Central Running Rebels. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the individual medallions for the 15th region champs the South Floyd Raiders! These medallions will be presented by Mr. David Tackett and Mr. Greg Johnson. And now Mr. Dennis Hillen will present the winning coaches trophy to coach Henry Webb from South Floyd High School. More than ever, we're all living online right now. It's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments, all without leaving your home. Make life a little easier. Online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. And now the winning team trophy presented by Mr. Frank Welch and Mr. Ricky Mead, the South Floyd Raiders. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we have a very special presentation by Mr. Ricky Mead and Mr. Forrest Dell Johnson. Thanks to the generous sponsorship of Community Trust Bank, this year we're able to give $1,000 to the championship team to help defray expenses of traveling to the state tournament. At this time, if Mr. Henry Webb would please report to the center of the court, Mr. Mead and Mr. Johnson would present Mr. Henry Webb with a check in the amount of $1,000 for the Raiders' trip to the state tournament. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the all-tournament team, these trophies presented by Mr. Ricky Mead and Mr. Paul Dotson. The all-tournament team consists of 12 players chosen by representatives of the media. The player who received the most votes in the tournament will be the MVP. And now, in no particular order, 
the members of the 2001 15th Region Boys All-Tournament Team. From Pikeville High School, Matt Branham. Our next member of the all-tournament team from Allen Central High School, Sean Newsom. From South Floyd, Michael Hall. From Paintsville High School, Chaz Harmon. From Pikeville High School, Chase Gibson. From Allen Central High School, Jeremy Hayes. Our next member of the all-tournament team is from South Floyd High School, Mr. John Mead. From Shelby Valley High School, Mr. Shannon Akers. From Paintsville High School, Mr. Ben Hale. From Shelby Valley High School, Terry Wright. From Allen Central, Larry Mullins. And finally, our most valuable player award for the 15th Region Tournament from South Floyd High School, Rusty Tackett. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our trophy and awards presentation. Again, we wish to express our sincere thanks to our corporate sponsor, Community Trust Bank, and to you, our fans, for making this event such an outstanding success. Good luck to the South Floyd Raiders as they go to the Sweet 16 in Lexington's Rupp Arena. Thank you for your attendance, and have a safe trip home. Good night, everybody. And there you have it, the wrap-up.
Rusty Tackett, MVP of the tournament, and uh, well-deserved as he had a fantastic tournament, not only scoring-wise, but he was uh, did a tremendous job on the boards and plays plays great defense. I'll echo that, Ken Hall, as uh, it was pretty much no surprise after the big game that Rusty Tackett had here in the championship game to help South Floyd get the 15th regional championship. And again, congratulations going out to South Floyd Raiders. The whole school, the girls team had a great run at it. And just uh, a lot of happiness up there in uh, Beaver Creek area. And we want to encourage everyone to get out to the state tournament and back your South Floyd Raiders here in the mountains of Eastern Kentucky. Because that's the big show that they all play for all year. The Sweet 16, one of the 16 elite teams in the state of Kentucky. And, oh, what a sweet feeling it is. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we need to run down some individual stats here for the, for the game. Uh, South Floyd led tonight by MVP Rusty Tackett. As Tackett with 18 points tonight. John Meade had 12. But one of the big stories of this game, Adam, was the uh, sophomore Tyler Hall with 14 points. He hit four three-pointers, hit two of them in the fourth quarter when South Ford was making the run to pull away uh, for the victory. And in fact, he ended up with eight points in the fourth quarter, a total of 14. Eight points for Josh Newman, six for Charles Ray, and the uh, great uh, sophomore guard Michael Hall only four points tonight, but uh, he played a he still played a heck of a game as he does a great job handling the ball for this team and uh, and made some beautiful passes tonight. Plays great defense, so uh, a fine effort by those young men. Congratulations to him. Jeremy Hayes had 21 to lead Allen Central tonight as he hit five three pointers. 19 for Sean Newsom. Uh, nine points for Larry Mullins, and what a tournament he had. Didn't, didn't score a whole lot tonight, but he was a, a leader for this team uh, all season long. He's done a great job at the point guard position. Had a great tournament. Rodney Scott with seven, and Travis Francis with two to round out the scoring for Allen Central. As far as uh, rebounding, uh, South Floyd tonight out-rebounded uh, Allen Central 42 to 36. Uh, turnovers, uh, South Floyd only nine turnovers, one of the big factors in the game. They did a great job taking care of the ball while Allen Central committed 17 turnovers. Uh, shooting, uh, neither team shot really well tonight as uh, South Floyd 24-66 from the field for 36%. Only eight of 30 from the three-point line for 26%. Allen Central 19 of 51 for 37% and eight of 24 from three-point land for 33%. Uh, South Floyd really struggled at the free throw line tonight, uh, six of 18 from the line, uh, while uh, Allen Central shot exceptionally well, 12 of 15. But just a, a great, great win here for these uh, Raiders from South Floyd. And do they have a great fans or what? I mean, they, they, these last couple of years, they've had more, probably more fans follow their team than any team in the region. They always pack the house, whether they're home or away, and great fan support and uh, a lot of happy people. And I want to tip my hat to the Allen Central Rebel organization, Johnny Martin, another excellent season. And you hate to see any team that plays as great as they did throughout the season and as many uh, battles that they had on the way here to the championship game lose. But, you know, one team has to go home, the other team advances to the Sweet 16 uh, with the championship. And Coach Martin uh, needs to be commended as well as his players in Larry Mullen, Sean Newsom, and the whole group there at Allen Central. Just an awesome tournament. And it's been a privilege to watch and call these games of the Allen Central Rebels and South Floyd and, and all the teams participating in this 15th regional tournament and all the district tournaments that we filmed last week. Uh, it's been the pleasure of the Air Mountain Sports Network to, to be able to go into the schools and, and, and we definitely want to extend our thanks to all the hospitality that we've been shown throughout the 15th region right. and and this has just been a, a great show here in March Madness 15th regional tournament and we're waiting for Pete Grigsby Jr. to get up here and get a couple final comments from him before we wrap things up here but Ken Hall South Floyd Raiders just they won the 58th district last week in a big way over Allen Central they just come out firing fired up and it just seemed like they got on a row ever since 
Shelby, or excuse me, ever since South Floyd went over, it was one of the last games of regular season, Shelby Valley went over on South Floyd's home court. I believe he was there. Right. Absolutely stunned South Floyd. But I believe Coach Henry Webb said that was a wake-up call that his team needed. They've been on a row ever since then, uh, winning every game that they've played. Right, as they got beat by nearly 60 points that night. And uh, what, what a job by Coach Webb uh, to, to bring his team back from a defeat like that. And a lot of teams would be destroyed uh, to have a defeat like that. It would just, just destroy their self-confidence and uh, ruin the season. But Webb, a great job, Coach Webb, to uh, get his team back on track. And what a run to uh, all the way to the regional championship. And again, I definitely uh, wanted to tip my hat to the Shelby Valley Wildcat organization. Uh, Coach Rowe and his team, an excellent season. And uh, <laughs> they went down to Allen Central in that first game by five, 57 to 52. But that, that was a barn burner indeed that we got to see. And Shelby Valley ended their season 27 and three. Uh, they need to be commended as well. Absolutely, great job of Coach Rodney Rowe and, and uh, his team. Uh, some other people here at Shelby Valley, uh, they've been great to us all week. Tremendous hospitality, they're really taking care of us. Uh, like to mention uh, some special gentlemen, uh, Ricky Tucker, Milford Case, and Roy Hall uh, here at the school. They've helped us take care of our equipment all week and uh, guarded it for us and uh, just been went out of their way to do anything they could to help us, as has everybody here. Uh, Johnny Dean Adkins and J.R. Dameron have fed us uh, exceptionally well and uh, a lot of hospitality. Connie Gilpin, of course, the athletic director up here at Shelby Valley, Jerry Mead and uh, Forrest Dale Johnson, uh, the principals. And uh, it's, it's been a great week of basketball here. And again, congratulations going out to the Johnson Central Lady Eagles as they win the championship of the 15th region. As earlier today, they defeated Shelling Park by a score of 55 to 51 to claim the championship. And week after next, they'll be traveling down to Western Kentucky to play in the girls' Sweet 16, Ken. And, and Johnson right. Central with a big comeback in the fourth quarter of play. Yes, they did. They trailed by nine going into the fourth quarter and came out in a full court press and uh, really created havoc for uh, Sheldon Clark and uh, came back to win that game by four, as you said, 55-51. Great job of Coach Philip Wireman and his staff. I want to get some of Charlie Pinson's uh, comments here as uh, we're winding down here in the post-game show, the championship post-game show. And Charlie, I know you'll agree too. It's been quite a treat up here. Well, you know, it has all these ball games have come down, gone down to the wire in this tournament. It's probably been one of the best tournaments I've been associated with. You know. It has been, been tremendous. Uh, so many great games that, that were right to the wire. Uh, this championship game, no exception. It's uh, just a great effort by both of these teams. Well, Pete Griggs, he's back in the crow's nest with us here where we've been all 15th regional tournament. It's been an excellent place. Uh, to view these games and call these games and and I know you've been down there enjoying this celebration and, and and there's a lot of elated South Floyd fans on the court right now there are certainly are it's been a long wait for them since 1973 28 years Adam since left Beaver Creek's gone to the state tournament in the boys action and uh, well you see the celebration they know how to celebrate I'm telling you uh, when they win a tournament to go to Rupp Arena, it's been like that for years. And uh, I can't say enough about the victory. Of course, uh, I've been down there also not only congratulating the South Floyd players and their coaches and fans, but I went over and, and uh, shook hands with Johnny Martin and his ball team and, and gave them condolences. Uh, Johnny knocks on that door a lot. I don't know how many times we could figure it up, but he's been to regional finals, I'd say, five or six times. He knows what it's like to lose one, but um, he was a little downhearted. But I told him he had a great year. Okay. A great season, Adam, and, and I mean that sincerely. They, they won the regional class A, did uh, very well down at Richmond. So what can you say? Somebody wins, somebody has to lose. Okay, we're going to have to wrap it up as we come to the end of our tape. And remember, we'll be showing this back on WPRG TV 5 tonight. So stay up, watch the tube as this championship game was a great one. And again, South Floyd, the 15th regional champions as they defeat Allen Central 62 to 58. 
And also, congratulations going out to Johnson Central Lady Eagles as they defeat Sheldon Clark earlier today, 55 to 51. For the whole group that helped the Intermountain Sports Network, we want to thank them. Charlie Pitts and Ken Hall, P. Grace Jr., Sean on the camera. I'm Adam Gearhart. Also, Johnny Ray Turner, a special guest up here, was definitely glad to have his presence in the booth. So, congratulations, South Floyd Raiders, and the Intermountain Sports Network will be back at it next season. And uh, we're glad you're making us your choice on the radio and TV. Well, until then, we'll see you. Have a great bye.